Yes, welcome to uh, the curl release video presentation for curl 890. Um, so this is July 24, 2024, and I just did a curl release this morning, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the fun stuff we have done in this release. So I am Daniel, I am the lead developer of curl. I've founded the project a long time ago. I work for Wolf SSL. That's my site. That's my Mastodon account. So I'm going to do this presentation. It's going to take maybe in half an hour or 40 minutes or something. I'm going to do it in the same manner that I usually do them. Talk about some numbers, security stuff in this release, the changes we've done, some of my favorite bug fixes, and quite a few of them this time, actually, because we had an extraordinary amount of bug fixes in this release. And then just something about a coming removal and something about what might be coming next, which also is a lot this time. I mean, planned, perhaps, maybe. So bear with me. I'm going to talk a lot now. So this is curl release 258, counted from the very start in 1996. This time around, we had participation from 80 contributors who have helped out reported bugs, uh, contributed in different ways. 38 of them are new. So we're over 3,200 named persons in the thanks file now. 47 of these contributors actually wrote, well, authored commits that we merged into the code. 16 new and 1,288 commit authors in total now. We keep having a large amount of contributors and authors and yay, that's awesome. We did a full release cycle this time. So we didn't do anything early because there was nothing urgent with urgent enough to do an early release. And actually, the, this release was origin, originally planned to get to have been done last week, but it was done this week instead. So it was one week extra, meaning 63 days instead of 56. Um, and a total of 9,623 days since the first curl release. <clears throat> and we have two security advisors this time, uh, and the, you should really go and look at them at the URL here on this slide to figure out all um, the details. And I shouldn't then just put my video on top of the URL. So, um, <clears throat> because there are details here and you want to know them. Two new this time, as I mentioned, it means that we're up to 157, I think, in total. But, you know, all security vulnerabilities are not alike. I think we are at two high severity flaws the last three years. So they're not usually very serious. The two ones this time are uh, rated medium and low. <clears throat> and I want to start with the one we rate as severity medium. We call it <clears throat> freeing stack buffer in UTF-8 ASN1 STRU. That's a mouthful. The uh, UTF-8 ASN1 STRU is an internal function in curl for, um, well, parsing a string, a UTF string in the ASN1 format. In It's a certificate uh, detail. Well, format. And anyway, in this function, which actually um, is kind of annoying because it's a, it's a regression because I polished this function a while ago to make it better. And then uh, in one of these weird error cases, it will actually do a free on a stack based buffer um, by mistake then of course. So if you pass in an invalid UTF-8 string, it can trigger this flaw where it will do a free on a local stack-based buffer instead of, I mean, you know, shouldn't do it at all. It was just a leftover from some old code, um, which in most cases actually is just a, many modern uh, memory allocators like glibc and stuff, they will just not do anything bad with this. It will just warn about it. Some will do an um, abort on it and stuff like that. So in many cases, it'll just, well, survive it, but there are also other libc uh, uh, 
implementations <clears throat> where doing a free on a stack based buffer is could is risky and it could cause some serious trouble of course sort of yeah that's the flowing curl and then of course if you return a stack based memory into the pool of free memory someone else will do an alloc malloc later and get that memory in their um, function and bad stuff will happen of course within the same process and so on but anyway <clears throat> so and yeah right um i forgot to mention that so this is in the um, asn1 parser the x509 asn1 parser which is only used for a in certain builds of curl. So not all builds of curl are affected by this. In particular, maybe I should just emphasize that if you build curl with OpenSSL, this code doesn't ex isn't compiled in. So if you're using OpenSSL, this doesn't hurt you. It can't because it's not built in. But if you're using GNU TLS in particular, I think you, um, <clears throat> there are a few others you should read about, about it. But I'm mentioning GNU TLS just because Debian recently switched their main curl to this. Anyway, now you know it. Uh, it was reported by um, the hacker Z2 underscore at hacker1 is actually, yes, is going by that name. So I actually don't even know this hacker's uh, real name. <clears throat> Z2 underscore also submitted the other security problem this time. So there were two this time, both reported by Z2 underscore. And this is, this is um, weird. So this is a, a flaw, severity low. We call it CVE 2024-6874. And it's in the Mac IDN Punicode um, functionality. So IDN is the international domain name system. Uh, you know how to if you want to go to a you want to transfer data to a url using something other than us ascii characters uh, you use international domain names and when you do that you convert the I, the international domain name into a punicode version and that's the punicode version you're using against the uh, dns resolvers and stuff like that anyway we recently added support for the mac idn uh, system meaning that you it, you don't need a external IDN library when you use curl with this. You can just uh, use build it with your Mac native libraries. And then that's the back end we call Mac IDN. So it only works and it's only supported on Apple operating systems. That is Mac OS and iOS and iPad OS and all these different Apple operating systems. And <clears throat> When doing this and you provide, and, and curl then has a API function that lets you encode or decode these IDN to punicode and punicode to IDN um, back and forth. And if you would ask to do that with a, ask to convert a name that is exactly 256 bytes, which should be really rare, right? Because it's a really long um, IDN or punicode name very rare but if you have a user that can affect your input maybe that can happen and if it would be exactly 256 bytes the conversion uh, would be bad and curl could end up reading outside a stack based buffer and it could lead to badness anyway that's the second cve this time also reported by z2 underscore Read, about, read up about the details. And again, this only affects users on Apple operating systems where, where, um, where you build with the Mac IDN, uh, IDN backend. So not everyone is affected. So <clears throat> with those two security things out of the way, go read up about the details to figure them out um, because we have, and if there's anything you know, in doubt, or if you miss anything, ask us about it because we know everything about it and we want to make sure that you understand all that, all of it. <clears throat> this time we added lots of new things in the command line tool. And 
we added four new command line options, for example, we now have 263 command line options. One of them being the uh, dash dash IP TOS, TOS for type of service. Uh, it's a, you know, we debated what to call this. Of course, we always debate what to call things, but in this time, uh, this in this case, its type of service is an IPv4 header field. It's actually called traffic class in the IPv6 case, but it's ver it's basically the same header field in the in the IP header, just different names in the different versions. Anyway, it's just a numeric field. So, if you have equipment, something that sort of treats your traffic differently uh, depending on what you set that header to. Now you can make curl set that header and you know make sure that your traffic gets treated the way you want to. It should be rather rare. Uh, we managed this long without having a, a way to set it, but now you can. Similarly, we also have the MPTCP option now, dash dash MPTCP. MPTCP is of course short for multipath TCP. Multipath TCP being a way for two endpoints to to speak TCP between each other over two or more paths over the network. Um, so you would ask your client to enable this. So and if the server also supports this, they can speak uh, with each other using more than one path across the network, which in theory should make it more resilient and possibly faster. This is um, restricted to, to Linux right now, but the feature is there and should be possible to allow uh, and enable on other platforms as well in the future. <clears throat> and then we added the dash dash VLAN priority option. Again, a rather niche option. We only add niche options these days, right? Because all the big ones are already there. So VLAN is a you know, virtual local area networks. It's just a numerical value that you can set in the in the um, protocol, really underneath IP. Basically, in, well, it's in Ethernet. So it's a way to set the VLAN priority number. It's a three-bit number, I believe. So, um, and this is not. Um, since it's on Ethernet, it's not going to survive IP routing. So it's really, really for your own local network. So if you have things on your local network that care about VLAN, and you can set that VLAN uh, priority now. And then finally, well, the final new option, command line option for this time, is the keep alive count or keep alive CNT. We call it CNT because that's usually the defined name in all operating systems. It's actually usually called keep alive CNT. And keep alive CNT is basically just <laughs> curl has supported the keep alive options, uh, several keep alive options for many years. But for some reason, we left out this option. So you could set a lot of the other uh, counters and timers and everything. So this is the counter how many keep alive probes curl should send over a connection before it considers the connection dead. Uh, usually systems have a different amount of um, uh, probes on different operating systems and different TCP stacks and everything. But now you can say, hey, send 10 probes before you consider the connection dead or three probes or 22. <clears throat> it's it's not that this is really not anything that is going to change much for anyone, but it's a completeness thing. Anyway, moving on, we also added the new a new variable for the right right uh, for the right out option, the dash w option. You know, it has a lot of variables that you can output sort of information from the past transfer, and now there's this new information variable called num retries. It basically counts. It counts number of retries that were performed in the previous transfer. So if you do a transfer with the dash dash retry option, curl might retry the transfer for a number of times, depending on 
what you ask it to do. And this is the option that can then, after the fact, tell you how many retries did it actually do in order to perform this request or this transfer. So we also did a bunch of changes in the library side of things. Um, for example, we added uh, CA caching in the GNU TLS backend. CA caching being that curl uh, loads the CA bundle from disk and keeps it in memory uh, when you do new connections instead of reloading the CA bundle for every new connection, which is which it does otherwise, which can be a rather significant performance blow really because it is a few hundred K of data and it needs to be parsed and have managed in memory and everything. So if you can skip that when you do uh, subsequent multiple transfers and or connections could be a huge boost, especially if you have, you know, short bursty transfers and you want to do 22 of them uh, for, to different hosts, for, for example, this will, this is a notable change in performance. We added support for this uh, curl up sort info feature in the embed TLS backend. We, as I've been talking about for a very long time, we have now, when you use the no proxy feature, the, the different patterns that you provide in, in that feature, you know, patterns that should not use proxy. They now must be, the, the patterns must be comma separated. Previously, they could skip the comma. Now they can't. Uh, you can now bind connections to interface name and IP address. And why do you want to do that? Well, sometimes you can actually have multiple interfaces with the same IP address, and then you didn't actually know exactly which one it could, well, it would use. Now you can specify that. Uh, and then of course the, the library version of the keep alive count uh, option, the curl opt TCP keep count. And <clears throat> another little um, rather obscure thing here. Um, the, the curl URL API, it has this feature that it can parse a URL without a scheme, right? Like you. Like when you type just curl localhost, curl will guess that when you type, when you parse a URL that says just localhost, the URL API has this feature, guess, which scheme it is. It doesn't really guess. It just has a heuristic for determining which scheme it is. But uh, now the URL has a way for, you, for the application to figure out when it has, when you have parsed the URL and you, later you want to use that parsed URL, you can now ask the API, did you guess the scheme or was it provided origin originally? Now, th that's what this new option is for, curl you no guess scheme. It's actually the wrong name here. I did a typo. Um, sorry, what's it called? No, no, sorry. It is, it is called like that. Uh, Basically, you're, yes, you, you ask, I want to get the URL without the guest scheme. So if you if it used the guest scheme, you will get the URL back again without it. As otherwise, you would always get the scheme guest or not. And now you can use this to figure out if the scheme was guest or not. That's at least how I use this feature in the Trural tool. <clears throat> or will use. I will have to do a new TrueRel release, I believe. Anyway, uh, we also added support for CA caching in the Wolf SSL backend. Uh, as I mentioned for the GNU TLS backend, caching the CA uh, cert bundle is a really good um, thing for performance when doing multiple transfers, multiple connections, really. And this is a part of our ongoing effort to add TLS features for all the different backends because we supported a lot of different backends, but not all features are supported by all backends. So it's a little bit of a work for us to keep adding to making sure that all the backends have support for all the features that people want. And of course, you can help there. This time around, we fixed, we have logged in the re release notes, we mentioned 260 bug fixes, which is a 
new curl world record. Of course, we had another extra week in, in the release cycle, so it's one week extra, so it helped us, but still an amazing amount of bug fixes in just 63 days. And some of them that we fixed, <coughs> actually quite a few there since I went through the list, you know, 260 bug fixes, which, which bug fixes should I mention here in my presentation? <laughs> so, and I ended up with a huge list and then I carefully removed a few, maybe I shouldn't mention this, blah, 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 but still I ended up with this list. So bear with me. I'm going to try to be a li little bit brief. So, and of course you go to the change log and read about all the details if you want to have the full thing because that's the full list and it's going to be way more detailed than I'm going to be now. It also typically links to all the bug reports and pull requests so you can figure out all the details in case you need to. <clears throat> Victor uh, got crazy during this release cycle and uh, has worked intensely on improving the CMake build. And not only he did it, but I think he did most of it. And I counted at least 26 separate bug fixes in the CMake build, so it should be a lot better now. I bet you didn't even have problems with it before, but now it's even better. In the configure build or the tools, it has at least 10 separate bug fixes. So we keep on polishing the build systems and how to build curl, of course, and cross compile and everything and find the third party libraries and everything. So usually, of course, you don't experience problems with this. Usually you actually don't experience bug f bugs at all. But anyway, we keep fixing them. I did a huge category cleanup for the dash dash help. So if you know, you know, if you do dash dash curl help, curl help category, it'll list which categories and it'll put options into categories. So you can list options just for a special category, which could be a protocol or output or, you know, five different kind of well, tags really. So I removed a few categories. I added a few and moved a few options around to, I think, to make it make more sense, at least to me. And then we also have now, so now when you do curl dash dash help, it'll, it actually shows you the categories already in the dash dash help output, just to shortcut a step in case you want to check that particular category, check the options for a particular category. Now we, it was a little bit of a regression in the past. So now we are, again, we allow e tag and content disposition parsing for 300 uh, HTTP responses, replies. Pre we, for a while there, we only allowed two XX re responses, which apparently was not, uh, I mean, some users actually use the three XX responses for e tags and content disposition. Uh, we did, I say on this slide, countless fixes, polish and corrections for the documentation. And yeah, I think that's how we got to 260 bug fixes because we also count documentation bug fixes and we had a lot of them. I did a lot of them myself. So I think the documentation has taken a big step. Yeah forward in the in the right direction in this release and um, now when you run the test suite uh, and one or more test cases fail they will actually show the name and the keywords for the failed tests in the summary in the end which as we are adding more and more tests is actually kind of helpful because uh, when you run a few thousand test cases and three of them fail you get a better understanding exactly I mean, not only which test case, but perhaps also you can draw some conclusions why they failed when you see their names and uh, keywords. <clears throat> so moving on, lots of bug fixes. So a while ago, not too long ago, just a few releases ago, we changed how to do asynchronous name resolves on Windows. So previously we always did uh, threaded name resolves by default on Windows, but we've switched to do to instead use the get other info XW function. You know what that is, right? No, it is a asynchronous name resolver function on Windows. So 
is actually hiding the thread used, right? So we don't have to do any threading. We can just use this function and it'll just do asynchronous name resolves for us. Um, <clears throat> but due to some, I claim a Windows bug, it doesn't actually work when you have what they call impersonation enabled for, for this, for a Windows situation. Impersonation, meaning that you run processes as different users somehow. I'm not entirely sure exactly how you do that or why, but anyway, then the get other info thing doesn't actually work. It crashes in Windows. I blame Windows, but anyway, now in when we detect that this is the situation, we switch to uh, using the threaded version instead, instead of this asynchronous version, and it should be fine. You, I'm sure you will report to us if it isn't fine. We fixed problems with the AWS SIG v4 um, authentication. It's a never ending stream of fixes there because it's a, it's a authentication done by Amazon, but the specification is, um, well, if I say lacking, I'm being very friendly and um, well, diplomatic. <clears throat> When doing do cleanup, that is DNS over HTTPS, and you would stop the transfer perhaps prematurely, we had some problems. We are now doing it better. We also had some memory leak and problems with zero length HTTPS RR records in DNS over HTTPS. And actually, the only way, the only time you would build support for HBS or our records in, in DO in curl is when you build with uh, ECH enabled, which is an experimental feature. So most people would never see this. Still, we fixed the problems. We had, uh, we also fixed this fun, fun issue that, so when you do, when you set up to do multiple transfers with, with a multi interface with curl, you can say, Hey, I only want to do 10 connections. And that's fine. Then when you're doing transfers, you do can do many transfers, but you limit curl to only do those 10 connections. And if you want to do more transfers, the, the new ones will queue up and wait until there's another connection completed. And then sort of, you know, wait so that you never go above 10 connections because you set that as a limit. But then it turned out that if you enable DO at the same time, you might have nine connections and then you set up the 10th connection, but DO also needs connections. So you would end up in a sort of catch 22 that you couldn't start a new connection because you needed more connections for the DO resolve thing. It was a little bit of a challenge how to solve that, but basically we have made now that DO, the actual DO procedure, they are not actually counted as connections in this case. So you will, they will actually briefly then go above the max connection limit for the actual name resolution thing <clears throat> because hey what do you do we had a problem with this lovely german double s symbol uh, when you build with the apple idn sometimes called the mac idn internally uh, <clears throat> this symbol when you convert it when you use uh, international domain names they it actually treated differently in the idna 2003 versus idna 2008 standards and i don't know exactly how it happened but we wrongly used it from the wrong standard and blah, 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 blah. now it should be better we fix compilation if you have <laughs> this is weird if you have OpenSSL 1 with MD4 disabled, curl would not build correctly. Um, on OpenSSL 3, MD4 is always disabled, but it curl worked with that correctly. Um, and then we had this weird failure that when you did a connect failure, you would sometimes not get the final uh, progress information like sizes and speeds data because we missed that final op update. So you would per possibly get a slightly outdated uh, information on connection failures. You could 
get a weird hang when using the multi-socket API, that is the event-based API during the resolving phase, because we uh, did not tell the application correctly what uh, socket to wait and for. Fixed now, that was of course a regression. And a fun part, uh, going into the Quake and HTTP 3 changes we did, we have now uh, enabled UDP GRO when you build and use Quick and use Quick with some specific backends and the backends then being NGTCP2 or Kish, then you have get the UDP GRO enabled. GRO being generic receive offload, I think. Um, it is, to put it simply, a better, faster way to receive UDP from the kernel in Linux. It actually makes a significant performance change. So when doing quick or HTTP 3 in this case, you will get a, a faster transfer. I measured up to 30% faster HTTP 3 with this enabled compared to not enabling this. And now if you want to build curl to do quick with OpenSSL um, the, that we call the OpenSSL quick backend, you, we now require at least OpenSSL 3.3. We previously also worked with 3.2, but we cut out that support because it was a sort of a weird, it was an ineffective and bad API. It lacked stuff. So we just said, we now say that you need 3.3 to get OpenSSL quick uh, running. <clears throat> Shouldn't be uh, such a big sacrifice for anyone to do that bump because it'll, you if you want to do OpenSSL, uh, the, the open a quick route, you want at least 3.3. You probably want even more newer versions going forward. We also added proper support for shutdown uh, when doing HTTP 3 and quick, quick really, because the connection is quick, not HTTP 3. So when we would leave a connection, we now make sure that we correctly tell the server that we are shutting down the connection. Previous, previously, we would just leave it in many cases, so the server wouldn't know that we actually dropped it. <clears throat> so we had some issues with the CRLF conversion for input when, when uploading, I think it was email protocols fixed now. We had a problem with start TLS for SMTP. So when you would enable TLS for SMTP, uh, it would sometimes not do correctly. Now it does. Weird changes. We fixed the TCP, TCP keep alive options from milliseconds to seconds on Dragonfly BSD because this is a <laughs> the the on a lot of operating systems it is a common way to use seconds when setting the keep alive timers, you know, with the IOCTL functions. And apparently on Dragonfly BSD at some particular version recently, they changed from milliseconds to seconds. And now of course, curl has to adopt to that change so that it works correctly, even on Dragonfly BSD version, whatever it is recently. And very similarly, we had a, another tweak to make sure that you can actually set these TCP keep alive um, parameters on uh, older Solaris versions. I believe this is not very old, but slightly older Solaris. For similar reasons, I think it was also seconds, milliseconds related things. I don't remember the details exactly. Um, we have done quite a significant change in this release in that we are doing, attempting to do better TLS and TCP shutdowns, connection shutdowns. So when doing, uh, <clears throat> when using the, basically in most cases, we're trying to do a more careful close notify for TLS and, and proper shutdown for TCP to avoid, avoid um, wait states or resetting the TCP connection uh, in cases where we previously did and we want to avoid doing because if we get a lot of connections into these uh, wait states after closure um, it could end up a resource problems for some applications that want to do many more new connections and they 
sometimes then end up not being able to create new connections because the old ones are still lingering, lingering around in the TCP stack. Anyway, this was quite a big um, refactor in the in the code. So uh, there is a small risk that we have some regressions after this. Page six of bug fixes done in eight nine zero. We are funny thing about trailing dots in host names, of course, because that's the gift that will never end. Uh, being a fun thing so there would you, sometimes when you would connect to a host name using a trailing dot it would do it would not work correctly over HTTPS if you use GNU TLS because the GNU TLS uh, function call for verifying the host name didn't actually want the host name it wanted the SNI name contrary to how it's documented I've complained to them. I hope they update their documentation. The SNI name being the name without the dot, the host name being the name with the dot, the trailing dot. Seriously confusing, uh, but hey, should be better now. Uh, we messed up the TLS version range checks for when you did quick using GNU TLS, a regression, fix that. Embed TLS came out with this new version a while ago, a month ago, something, 3.6.0, and it introduced support for TLS 1.3, for example, which, of course, everyone who's using Embed TLS uh, probably appreciate. Uh, but they also changed behavior, so they pretty much broke their API, and, and now if you curl would not work with it because it would now return things that it previously didn't and it didn't really work well so now we have workarounds for that so now you can upgrade to update to embed tls 360 you can use uh, tls 103 with curl with this backend and it should work fine i mentioned security fix in the asn um, one parser for x509 certificate things for a, several different TLS backends. And we actually did several different parser fixes in that. Turns out uh, we didn't have proper testing for all of that. And I mean, I did, I did some refactors of that code recently, a, a few versions ago, basically to make it more reliable and more you, using our own internal buffering functions instead of using malloc and realloc and memcopies, et cetera, to sort of make it uh, more reliable. And of course, it turned out that I then caused a few regressions, but uh, hopefully we fixed them. Or at least we fixed a bunch of them. I think I counted seven or something. Uh, it feels like maybe, maybe there are some more fixes to be done in there going forward. Anyway, those were the bug fixes I wanted to mention. As I mentioned, 260 bug fixes. We had about 230 more. Uh, <clears throat> and now we only have one pending removal, and it's in May 2025. So it's a long time off. But hey, you better start getting used to this idea that in 20, May 2025, we are planning to drop support for TLS libraries without TLS 1.3 support. So if, if the TLS library doesn't support TLS 1.3, we are not going to support it in curl after May 2025, or maybe in May 2025. Because it feels like um, it's a standard that's been out for quite some time. It's being used widely all over. Users of curl should be able to do TLS 1.3. Going forward, we are likely to do the next uh, release as um, version 8.10.0. I should just mention that when I talked about uh, TLS 1.3, that's the, we're dropping support for libraries that don't support 1.3. You can still use older TLS versions with curl if the libraries you build support it. So you can do TLS 1.1 or 1.2. I think even 1.1, 1.0 on most of these libraries. So that's not what we're dropping. We're dropping support for the libraries that cannot go to 1.3. So the next version is likely to become 
10.0 unless we messed something up in this release and we will do a patch release soon but ideally hopefully crossing all the fingers we won't so the next version could be this and if it's going to be that version we have a few things that we <clears throat> might merge this time and bear with me here's here's a here's a list <laughs> so first we have this pending thing that we talked about previously zeroing out sensitive buffers so basically keeping sensitive data uh, less uh, well shorter time shorter amount of time in memory that's a potential thing to do we have this skip existing new command line option to skip a download transfer if the local file is already there on the disk we want to do negative DNS caching. I mentioned this a few times as well. It's been uh, the PR has been with us for a while. Hey, well, let's let's work on getting that merged. We'll see. We want to add a support for a new timer or a sort of timestamp during transfers called post transfer time. It's actually for for post transfer being a upload transfer or or when we when curl is done sending whatever it wants to send to to better enable applications to know exactly at which millisecond microsecond the upload was considered done by curl for timing measurement performance measure stuff i have this cool new patch coming for uh, help options so you could do curl dash dash help and then answer a command line option dash dash insecure and curl will output the man page documentation for that option in the terminal it's i think it's a pretty cool way to get uh, easier help for for whatever command line option you want to do and then it works with the long option version the short option version and so on pretty neat we have a pr Pending. I'm not sure exactly how mature it is or if it's going to make it into this release, but it's for TLS 1.3 early data. Early data being a way to send payload application data earlier in the TLS handshake, basically uh, getting data sent earlier, faster, reducing round trip uh, sort of penalty. There's a, a PR coming for a default or rather is a clever file name to use when dash capital O is used and the URL has no file name. Like if you do curl example.com slash, you know, there's no file name in that URL. So there's, when you do that today, curl will say, hey, I can't save it. There's no file name. I don't know what to do. But with this coming change, curl will pick a file name first from the directory provided. So if you do example.com slash path slash it will pick the path name and use as a file name but if there's no path there's no directory it'll use a default file name called curl response i think that's the current name so anyway that's that's probably coming we're also going to support a very minor thing here but adding the percent uh, style of um, argument to the dump header option dash dash dump header it just saves the outputs the response headers so now you can send it to standard error by using this percent we use this per percent to standard error for a few other options so that's why we use the percent it's a little bit weird but that at least makes it consistent with other options in curl so instead of saving it to standard out or to a file you can send it to standard error because sometimes you want to uh, we we're going to introduce sh dash dash show headers as an alias or as a the new version of the of the option previously called dash dash include only because it's a, that calling it dash dash include is is a weird weird name it doesn't really say what it does and it's people are having a little bit of a struggle to you know use it understand it so dash dash show headers is the response headers so it's actually just a way to make it a little bit more explanatory the option dash dash rate which uh, rate limits how fast you do transfers when you ask curl to do several so if you want you know if you do globbing i want to do thousand requests 
but no faster than two per second or three per minute or five per hour. Now you can actually do with this coming change, you can do no more than three per two minutes or five per uh, three hours. So you can have a number of units. Previously, the unit was only, always only one unit. Now you can say a number of units. You can do five transfers per two seconds or 25 transfers per 45 minutes and stuff like that. We're going to work on adding an option to disable the WebSocket auto pong feature. Basic, uh, there's this feature in WebSocket where you send a ping and the other one and sends a pong back. And then curl has the auto pong enabled by default. So it always sends a pong back when the server sends a ping. Um, but now with this feature, you can disable that and then the application itself needs to send back the pong. We have a well proposed change that I like that I think might be coming that so we're introducing support for using more than one V V for verbose. <clears throat> so using Dash V has been a way to enable verbose for a very, very long time. I think since pretty much the beginning, so 26 years or so. And um, when, so Kurt has always just had one verbose level. So you have verbose, so you don't have verbose. It's just that on or off. So adding more Vs like dash VV or dash VVV, they don't actually do anything differently. They just you know, enable it more times, but enabling one more times doesn't add it more. It's just, yeah, it's verbose. But with this change, we might change that. So when you do, you use two Vs or three Vs, you can actually add more, output more verbose data. Pretty much because um, that is, well, it's an easy way to get more verbose output. And uh, also a lot of users already assume, presume that that's the way it works, uh, which has been shown many times over. So it's maybe it's time for us to actually support it the way people actually think it actually already works. There's a change coming to support an embedded CA bundle in curl. So the curl tool could get built to have the, the CA bundle, sorry, the CA store pretty much bundled into the binary. So instead of using an external CA store, it would bundle the entire thing into the executable. That means so you wouldn't need a, a separate uh, distributed file. It'll have everything built in, which of course is means that to update that, you would have to update the entire curl. But it also means that you don't have to ship that bundle separately in a separate tool. But, and you can still provide it separately. So you can still provide it with a command line, but you can have it op optionally built in. Um, <clears throat> I think this, um, this is pushed pretty much for the Windows binaries that we ship so that we will make it easier for people to just get a single binary and get more power out of that because it'll have a embedded CI store in the tool. We will also add support for more blob options for the Wolf SSL backend because we have a PR for that already. The blob options being a way to provide data to the library uh, when the data is provided in memory and not as file names. A lot of our options for TLS libraries originally supported, provided the data as file names. So the library would read it from files itself, but we also have, well, over the last five years or so, added blob options, which is a way to provide the same data as memory blobs in memory instead of files. And now we're gradually adding these uh, support for these options for different TLS backends. And this is then adding blob options for uh, support for those, some of those blob options for the Wolf SSL backend. So as you can see, we have a bunch of things that we hope to get done for the next release. I wanted to just especially emphasize the W curl project, which is, as you can see, it's a W curl. It's not curl, it's a W curl. W curl is a new 
effort, project, cool thing, script done, but it's not hosted by the curl project itself. It's actually done by Samuel uh, in uh, as is working with Debian, and this is now hosted uh, by Debian people. It's available in the GitLab and on GitHub, and if you Google for WCurl, you will find it. It's an attempt to provide a, I, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but uh, it's more or less like a WGET version, but it uses curl instead. So this is just a hundred line shell script that you do w curl and a URL and it'll download that URL into a local file in the same style vein spirit as um, wget does it. The planned idea I think is that you should you could you can use w curl then instead of wget if you just want to download a single URL. The way you would otherwise do wget URL, you can now use w curl URL. And I want to just to mention this because a lot of people appreciate it, like it, and, and think it's a good thing. And we have discussed, we are still discussing, talking about hosting it and shipping it with curl ourselves, but we still are not there and we're not in a hurry to go there. But because I think it's, this is still early days when it comes to w curl. We, if you have ideas, feedback, thoughts, go to them and talk to them and, and work with them to improve it and, and polish it and make it even better. And maybe we, at a future point in time, we can adopt it into the curl project uh, ourselves and ship it in future curl releases, maybe, if that is what we want. So, of course, feel free to tell us uh, what, what you think about that as well, because feedback is always appreciated. So the next release is probably going to happen um, on this time. September 11, 2024, if things go as planned. This means that we have a shorter release cycle next on this coming release cycle because we did a longer one this time and we have a shorter one the next round. <clears throat> you can check all the pending release notes for this release on this URL. So wait a minute, why does it say eight week release cycle? Uh, is it because it's the wrong? Hmm. H hang on. Is it supposed to? This is the one. Okay. But uh, magic. That's the one. Uh, and, uh, okay. It's supposed to say it's a seven-week release cycle this time. Uh, <laughs> as I mentioned, because the previous one was <clears throat> the previous release cycle was one week longer. So this release cycle is one week shorter. So just to keep the average to eight weeks. <clears throat> so today, up here, wherever it is, uh, is down here, uh, down there. Uh, it's difficult to point in the right direction. Uh, that's the release Wednesday. That's today. That's now. And we have 10 days cool down period. That means we have a just a bunch of days to, I don't know, allow people to report uh, serious issues. And if we find a serious issue in enough, we can do a patch release. If there's bad regressions, annoying problems, we do a patch uh, release, dot one, dot two, dot three, however many we feel like we have to do to fix regressions. And then, after the cooldown period, there's a Saturday and we do a feature window, which this time is then one week shorter than normally, just two weeks, 14 days. So uh, let's see how many of those PRs we manage to actually merge in that time. And I'm sure we will get a lot of new other PRs that I actually haven't thought about yet. And then there's a Saturday, two weeks later, and then we go into the feature freeze for 25 days and then we do release again. So this is July 24. That's the release Wednesday today. The, the cool down period ends on August 3. Then we have a feature window that closes on August 17. And then on September 11, we do the next release. So that's the sort of just the ordinary release cycle as 
put on dates. That's how we do releases. We've been doing them like this for over a decade now. <clears throat> if you if you work on on curl or you do that as a, in your business, you want support, help, education, features, bug fixes, anything. I am your man for that. If you find a bug, you go to GitHub and go to the issue tracker and you submit them there and we will work on fixing them as soon as possible, um, if we can. And if you have a security problem, suspected, think uh, you find something bad, report it to us on hackerone.com slash curl and you can earn money for, for doing it. These are our top sponsors, the same ones as they have been for a while now. They are the ones that make the most, uh, well, the top sponsors are the ones that actually make sure that we can run the project the way we do, uh, host it, run it, ship it, <clears throat> and develop it. So basically that's uh, curl for this time. Um, thank you for uh, being here with me. Um, I will be back then with another release video, ideally, hopefully in September. And until then, have a good day. Bye.